New South Wales, Australia. The Snowy Mountain Range, 260 miles south of Sydney, home to the tiny ski resort village of Threadbow. On the night of July 30th, 1997, this hillside started to move. At first, a few inches, then a few feet, before becoming an unstoppable torrent, racing downhill more than 70,000 cubic feet of earth. 3,800 tons of soaking wet mud and rock broke loose and hurtled down the mountainside, crushing two ski lodges and burying 19 people before sliding to a halt on a precarious 40-degree slope. The riddle of what set this landslide in motion led to one of the most lengthy and complex landslide investigations ever mounted. In the aftermath of the slide, emergency calls for help poured into the fire service headquarters. Fire brigade, how can I help? Wait, you're in a build, the building's collapsed, has it? Well, multiple buildings collapsed. Okay, whereabouts? Yeah, okay, no, I've already got someone on the way right now. We'll be there shortly. Yeah, do you have any idea how many people we might have trapped or how many buildings down? The local part-time fire brigade rushed to the scene, discovering with horror that many of their own relatives, friends, and neighbors had been buried alive. Those missing included ski instructor Stuart Diver and his wife, Sal. They had been asleep in their apartment when the speed and weight of the landslide pushed the ski lodge off its foundations, crushing it nearly flat and burying the recently wed couple deep under the wreckage. Stuart and Sal were both pinned down by concrete slabs and soaked in icy water which flooded down the hillside as the land slid. They screamed as water rose over their faces. Stuart lifted his head, but Sal was slightly below him, choking under the surface. Reaching out in desperation to touch his wife's face, Stuart could do nothing to stop the water pouring into her mouth. Stuart heard his wife drowning, until finally she lay silent and still by his side. Above ground, rescuers at first heard some victims screaming for help from under the mud. Rescue services poured into the area, but the landslide site was still unstable underfoot and police stopped anybody trying to dig in the dark. Firefighter Warwick Kidd knows how notoriously unstable landslide debris can be. The slope at which we were working, I mean, it was horrendous. It was very hard to stay upright. Nobody knew if the landslide had stopped or was about to resume its headlong rush down the hill. There's a very fine line between bravery and foolhardiness. The site is like a big set of pickup sticks. You pick up the wrong stick and the whole thing's going to crash down. Rescuers worked around the clock, but found no sign of life. But one man was still alive. In his concrete tomb, Stuart Diver was half naked, freezing cold, and barely able to move. Distraught at the loss of his wife, Stuart strained to lift his head above the muddy, polluted water that kept flooding over him. Fifty-three agonizing hours after the slide, a rescuer heard a cry from below his feet. Stuart could be heard through a tiny opening, far too small to free him, but just big enough for a camera to be lowered down. Rescue trained paramedic Paul Featherstone talked to the trapped man for hours, trying to judge how badly injured he was and reassuring him that help was on its way. I could monitor him uh, through a little screen. So I had really good communications uh, with Stuart under the ground. In an emotional bond with his would-be rescuer, 
Stewart revealed the horror of helplessly hearing his wife die. He'd been through absolute torture and hell, really. Um, he'd lost it at the love of his life. Uh, he's feeling physical pain and mental anguish like none of us could imagine. For 12 hours, rescuers dug their way inch by inch toward the trapped man. The noise of digging and concrete cutting machinery was deafening. Every time the earth started slipping, the rescuers had to evacuate, and then the site fell silent. While others left, Featherstone refused to abandon his trapped patient. He even came up with a plan to explain the silence. What we had to do was try and fool him or convince him that you know, things were all right up top. Because I knew he'd be now not hearing anybody working above him, and I picked up a shovel and I started belting it on the rocks as though other people were still working. Eventually, Stewart was pulled alive and almost uninjured from the wreckage. His miracle rescue lifted the spirits of Australians who had been stunned by the tragedy. And just a few days later, still deeply traumatized by the loss of his wife, Stewart sent a message from his hospital bed. All the people who have prayed uh, for me and uh, given me so much support over the last couple of days, um, it's been overwhelming and I don't think I would have uh, made it through. The cause of the Threadbow landslide at first mystified geologists. Water was clearly involved, as evidenced by Sal and Stuart Diver's ordeal. Yet there had been no rain for days, and it was too early in the season for snow to be melting from the mountain. So where had the water come from? Months of inquiry finally isolated unusual and entirely man-made causes of this disaster. A water pipe running above the village had leaked and saturated the soil. And the geologists also found that this part of the village, now a memorial park for 19 victims, had all been built on unstable debris from a landslide hundreds of years before. This disaster could have been prevented. 